Welcome back to Adventures in XNA, everyone. I am Ardermus, and this is part six. Uh, this segment will be div divided into uh, three main parts. First, we'll be adding a character sprite to your project, uh, and then we will learn how to actually use keyboard input to move the character across your tile map um, and scroll that tile map. And finally, we will learn how to animate our character uh, for their movement cycles and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get started. So the way that I'm going to be handling uh, the character is by actually making our uh, character a component of our world screen. Uh, since that's really the only place that the character is uh, physically going to come into play. Um, it's the only place you're going to see them is uh, when a map is being displayed and, uh, and that is generally what you're going to be moving as well. So uh, what I will do is go ahead and um, go into my Solution Explorer and open up our screens. I'm shrink my menus here. Um, I'm going to be adding them I'll probably create a separate folder here, actually. <laughs> Let's go ahead and right-click on our screens folder and add a new folder. And I'm just going to call this one World. And I will drag my World Screen class up into that folder. And then I'm going to right-click on that and add a new class. I'm going to call this class... Uh, I'm just going to call it Tune since he's our character's tune. Um, and then I will add that. And what we're going to be doing is actually making this class, rather than be a, a standalone class, it's going to be an extension of our world screen class. So what I'm going to do is create a partial class. So I'm going to say partial, not patrial partial public class world screen okay so it's acting like a class but it's actually just an extension uh, of our world screen and what this helps us do is extend our world screen class without you know over cluttering it and getting too much stuff in there where it's hard to manage all of our code uh, since the, the code that is contained in this is specifically for our character. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is add uh, so a screen position for our character. I'm going to say public tune screen x as integer. And um, this is going to be the actual physical coordinates of your character. Uh, if you recall, let's see if I can bring this up here. Um, in our last segment, what we did is we created a small island map here. Uh, and what, what I want to do is bring in my character somewhere into this map. Um, but the character, you know, since I'm doing this kind of in a classic role-playing game style, um, I want the character to always be center screen, and then I want to, rather than moving the character, actually, I want to move the map. So that's how we'll be handling our movement for this series. Uh, there are many different ways that you can handle movement. Um, you can do, you know, free movement where the character can move individual, you know, separate pixels or in diagonal directions. Um, also, you know, you can have a single screen game where your character just, you know, has free movement across that screen and there's not really a world map. There's a lot of different things you can do, including side scrollers. So um, we'll be focusing on that classic RPG style in this series. So what I want to do is add my character pretty much in the center of the screen or as close as I can get. Uh, I think I have kind of an odd or even number of tiles, which means I'm going to be offset a little bit. But I am going to start him out at eight tiles over and six tiles down. So for his Y position, I'm going to do public tune screen 
y as integer. So this is not his his position or location on the world map. Rather, it is his uh, physical position on the screen. Hope that makes sense. So uh, next up, we actually want to define his map coordinates. And that will be his actual location in the world itself. So I'm going to start uh, tune. Let's do tunes map coordinates. And I will do public tune x as integer. And I'm just going to set these to 0, 0 for now. Probably end up changing that later on. Tune y as integer equals 0. And another important um, set of variables for, you know, this will enable us to do smooth walking cycles. So instead of moving the map by an entire tile, we'll move by an offset value um, to actually scroll it smoothly as the character walks. And that'll also allow us to uh, adjust our character's movement speed on the map and things like that. So I'm going to do um, tunes map offset for smooth walking. So I'm going to say public tune offset x as integer. And I'm going to set that to 0 for now. Public tune offset y as integer, also equal to 0. And then we'll add some movement variables. Even though we're not uh, doing movement just yet, uh, we will be adding it very soon. So um, these variables will handle the character's movement. Uh, first, we'll do public tune moving as a boolean to specify whether the character is moving at any given time. Um, let's see, uh, move time as double. Set that to zero for our movement timer. And we'll do public move speed as integer. And I'm going to set the movement speed to be 3 by default. And uh, th the cool thing about using a movement speed is you can actually change his movement speed during the game. Um, it's great for effects like, you know, if you're walking across uh, difficult terrain, uh, you can speed it up or slow it down. Um, one more here. I'm going to say um, Actually, two more here. I want the movement direction, and I will do that as an integer. Oops, integer. And I will set that to zero for now. And public last dir. Um, I'll use that for figuring out what the last direction the character was moving in. So. Um, you know, when you take your hands off the keys, uh, he'll remain facing in a specific direction. You'll kind of get an, get a sense for what that is for or what that does later on. Okay, let's see. Probably going to do the character's animation frame as well. 